Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to What Do You Say Anime, I am your host Peter. On today's episode, we will be giving our first impressions on the currently airing Fall 2022 season. In a season filled with hyped up new gen shonen, five maybe properly adapted shoujos, and lesbians and robots, what has been our favorite so far? Joining me today, first you may have seen him from here and nowhere else, we got Miles. Miles, how's it going? Uh, it's going great. Um... That's about right, so thank you for that introduction. <laughs> I got you. And the host of the Manga Melee podcast, we got Jay. Jay, how's it going? Uh, it's going pretty well. My first time doing one of these first impressions, so thanks for having me, Peter. Uh, glad to hear and glad to have you here. On today's episode, we'll be going over the non-sequel shows and give our thoughts on the sequels at the end. There may be some minor spoilers going forward, so if you want to completely avoid specific shows and discussions, in the description below there will be timestamps to jump around. Now, boys, let's get into our first discussion. We have the most, I don't know, ever hyped up show I feel like I've ever seen on like social media. Uh, the show that has been catching the world by storm. I saw government officials tweeting about this show. We have Chainsaw Man. At the time of currently recording, we've only had one episode, but all three of us have read it. So we kind of have an idea of where maybe we think the anime is going. So, gentlemen... Wanted to get your thoughts on uh, Chainsaw Man and whether you would uh, recommend this or not. Yeah, so if you have paid attention to the podcast, if you're not like a first-timer, you know that I'm not super high on Chainsaw Man, the manga, but I was excited to see it animated. And so, like, I'm going to preface everything I'm about to say with, would I recommend it? Yes, because most people really, really love the damn thing. Now, time to be a hater. I actually did like episode one, but I, I was kind of expecting more, I guess. Like, it as you were saying, it's so hype, it's so anticipated, the manga is so popular. You know, we have, uh, is it MAPPA? Yep. Um, yeah, MAPPA doing it. And, like, I really was expecting it to just be, like, like, 10 out of 10 effort and everything, especially for the first episode. I understand you get some, like, dips as things go on. But, like, to me, it was, like, pretty... It might even be like 8 out of 10 on execution, but that was less than I was expecting, and so I was just like a little disappointed. I think, though, overall, it's a pretty good adaptation so far. I like seeing the world. The CGI goes from being really good to being a little out there for me, especially when he is Chainsaw Man. <laughs> you know, but I don't know. I... I... I would definitely recommend it. I am a little disappointed by it, but I don't think it's bad, if that makes sense. But I, I just had really high expectations. Jay, what are your thoughts? Definitely agree that I'm not quite as high on it as a lot of people on social media. I did enjoy it well enough. I liked the OP visually. The song is okay, in my opinion. But the amount of like <clears throat> references to cinema and pop culture and stuff that they can fit into the OP is really cool because Fujimoto's work is definitely based around pop culture references and homages in a lot of ways, especially with all the Tarantino references, because I remember when I was reading through Chainsaw Man, oftentimes I felt like, man, this is paneled like a Tarantino movie would be shot, and it feels like a Tarantino movie in a lot of ways. I think that this first episode definitely convinced me that they're not going to try and do this all in one season. It'll probably be a two-core at the very least. Just because this first episode, for those of you who might be unaware, it was just one chapter. It was one chapter adapted in one episode. And I think personally it's not going to be like that for the rest of it. I think that this first episode, it was just kind of important to do that because it, there's the lead-up to him becoming Chainsaw Man, which, by the way, I think that the animation for him, like, swinging around the chainsaw arms and stuff was really well done. They really caught, like, the weightiness and kind of clumsiness of it, I would say. And, um, yeah, the lead-up to him becoming Chainsaw Man and meeting Makima, like, they kind of needed to... Like, meeting Makima wouldn't have had nearly as much of impact if it was, like, in the middle of the episode or something like that, in my opinion. And I know a lot of people are saying Pochita, carry, like, they think Pochita is going to carry the season and he's best boy of the season. Hold that thought. Yeah. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I, I going into it, I had a, a ton of hype just like everybody else. And when it started out, I was like, this is looking incredible. 
And then when we got like halfway through the episode, when the CG started happening, I felt like I, I, I am a fan of CG in general. And I just felt like it didn't seem like they put as much effort into that as they did with the 2d stuff. And I was a little disappointed by that more, but in terms of like chainsaw man, I was a little skeptical that this wasn't going to get more than one part, but this is also coming from the studio that did attack on Titan, the final attack on final part two, and now attack on Titan, the final part three. So if we get chainsaw man, part two, part three, part four, it would make sense coming from Mappa. I just kind of wish that they would like, let us know ahead of time. If that was the case, because I'm a little nervous that there, I think that there is a chance that they throw in 96 chapters in these next 11 episodes. I can see them cutting a lot of content to maybe throw this all into one. I'm hoping I'm crossing my fingers. That's not the case, but I, I, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I, I think what chainsaw man has done so far has been really good. Kind of like what Miles said. I think it's more of like an, an eight out of 10 range for like a first episode, other than a lot of people considering it, you know, the second coming of Jesus Christ, according to Twitter, it, that that's a little obnoxious, but I think so far from what we've seen from Chainsaw Man, and I kind of know what to expect since we've all read it, I would recommend it personally. I think the majority of people are going to enjoy this show. And I'm just, I'm, I'm here for the ride, to be honest, because most of my qualms of the story comes in the second half than the first half. So we'll, just, we'll be here and we'll just see what happens. So uh, that is Chainsaw Man. Three, rec three thumbs up from us. Uh, if you haven't been watching it, I'm assuming you're living under a rock. So yeah. Uh, any final thoughts on Chainsaw Man? Yeah, I wanted to echo Jay's thoughts on the OP. All those references are super cool. I, I definitely, I don't know. I have hope for it. Um, for whatever reason, I'm like an extra hater with manga sometimes. So, um, I, <laughs> yes. I, I eat Gintama. <laughs> Uh, well, no, that's just me being correct. Oh, okay, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not me being a hater. But with like Call of the Night and potentially Chainsaw Man, I think I just wasn't in the right mindset when I was reading them. It, they were stuff that I was like required to read because of uh, our little manga club that we used to do recipes. Rest in peace. Um, you know, so I, I'm I'm excited to see this. I definitely like some of the characters. I will say I like Makima's voice actress in her other roles, but I don't think she's Makima. That's, Agreed. She needs a little more Ara Ara to her voice, I feel like. I wanted Pochita to have a deep, manly voice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, would have, yeah that would have been really funny. Fortsta. Ho, mukatte kuru no ka. Nigezu ni kono dio ni chikazuite kuru no ka. Pochita sort of sounded like Pikachu when Pikachu started talking in that one Pokemon movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, Makima's like a sinister character, and to me it felt... Like, if you closed your eyes, I couldn't, like, vision that character, if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, I mean, I completely agree. Other characters she plays include, oh, she's uh, Nehru from Wonder Egg, and some people from shows I've never seen. Yeah, cool. it's a pretty new cast in general. Yeah, I thought it was someone else, so I apologize for saying that I like them. I might not. <laughs> uh <laughs> Well, you you like you liked her in Wonder Egg, so that's, yeah, no, I, that's I did. One so character. I, yeah, we, yep. Cool. Jay, do you have <laughs> any final thoughts? Nope. Cool. Sounds good. So that's Chainsaw Man. Moving on to the next insanely hyped new gen shonen masterpiece. I know Miles is itching to talk about this. We have Blue Lock. I have my qualms with this show after the first, the second episode aired today. So. Uh, Want to get your guys' thoughts on Blue Lock. So, yeah, I, and this is kind of surprising, I love Blue Lock. I've had so much fun with it. The show is trash, but it's, like, the right kind of trash for me. Uh, again, if you just, like, gamify anything and make it even kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh!, I'll like it. This is what I'm learning about myself as we continue watching. I gave Birdie Wing a 9. So but that's good. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's better than Blue Lock, but Blue Lock is a lot of fun. I think I just sort of like the minor death game, but kind of low stakes. Like you can't play soccer again or whatever mm -hmm. um, thing of it. I like the ego character. He's kind of funny. Um, he talks about his ranking system being arbitrary and biased, which I thought was fun. Um, just like, you know, it pokes fun at itself for how ridiculous the premise is. They plan on having a soccer team with 11 strikers. 
which would just be terrible, right? Like it would be it'd be like having five Kobe's out there or something. Yeah. Um, but I do like the sort of Mamba mentality that's going into the anime. And I think that it's a good idea to like have this type, these types of personalities competing against each other, you know, sort of the more ruthless, selfish sort of, you know, I'd rather get a hat trick than win kind of people. So I had a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Jay? Look, it's a lot like walking into a knife store, which is to say, there's a lot of edge, but there's also a point to it, if you look <laughs> at it. And I feel like the point of it is, is that they really just wanted to corner a market that had not really... First of all, some context here. The creator of Blue Lock is the same person who did Jagan, which is one of the edgiest manga that I have ever read of all time. I'm talking about this is a manga where, like, it is just a complete body horror type thing. And, I like, people were kind of surprised whenever he made Blue Lock. I was not. Because Blue Lock is incredibly edgy in its own way, and I feel like I would like to see it usher in a new era of dark, edgy sports uh, anime. If we could get, like, a, an NFL Blitz, but in sports anime form... That would be sick. That, that would be, be insane. Awesome. So, but enough about that. I liked Blue Lock well enough. I think that it's really not much to write home about unless you like the premise. Like, it's not doing anything super impressive visually, in my opinion. Um... The character designs are okay, minus, like, the one guy who looks exactly like Ichigo from Bleach. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the soundtrack, again, not much to write home about. Like, it feels like if you like soccer, if you like edginess, then you'll definitely like this. But if you're not a fan of, like, sports manga or, like, kind of, not death games, but, like, elimination games, I should say then I probably wouldn't recommend it. If you're into those two things specifically, though, like Mayo seems to be, then go for it. Yeah. I, I'm not into sports, sorry for doing that. Like, I really just like, like, it's a good vehicle for me, but, like, if it was just about soccer, I wouldn't be in. Sorry to cut you off there, Pete. No, I get you. <laughs> I, I guess, like, you, you did a really good comparison with, like, gamifying something like Yu-Gi-Oh!, where, like, you know, it's a card game, but now they're playing it on top of a mansion, and there's dragons, and you can die from it. But then there's things like, I don't know, interesting characters like Kaiba, who's like the super rich guy and has all these like different features, or like Pegasus, who has like his own things. With Blue Lock, it's like the the I'll put as antagonist because I don't know what he is right now. Who's literally named Ego? Is just like ha ha ha. I'm evil. That's like the vibe I got from him. Of like this character is trash. Like it, it's so like it's like a character where like I would write for like a high school report where I needed to like I need to come up with an evil villain. Boo ha 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 ha. I'm going to steal your strikers, Japan. Something like that. That's that's like the vibe I got from him. And I was just like, it completely pulled me out of it. However, I did watch the second episode today, and that was significantly better. I I I understand what they're trying to do. Which and I have this complaint. Or sorry, I, I usually have this praise about anime. And we're gonna be talking about it about a show later on where they make they it's so over the top that that's why i gravitate to those type of shows but for some reason like something about blue lock was just like this is dumb i can't really put it into words it it's like a f it's fine is what i put it at but when people say like like right now on mal it's an 8.4 it's manga sales it's like 25 million or something like that when i see stuff like that i'm just like why? Like, what part of this is this? Like, yeah, this is fucking peak, baby. And that's because what, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's because it is dumb, but it's like fun. Like, it, it's so stupid, and like, yeah. But I think it knows it's stupid. But it's just like, it it's just taking the idea of, you know, like winning is everything, and 
maximalizing it. It's like, this is going to be a crazy comparison, but like Warhammer 40k or something, where it just takes its premise, it turns the knob all the way to the right until the knob breaks off, and it just goes with it. And like, you know, like it was comparing the desire to win to like a horrible monster that like controls you or whatever. And it's mm. like, it, I don't know. Like, imagine if this was about gambling. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yeah. So, um, like to me, it's just so fun because, like you were saying, it's absurd and it's stupid. Like, of course yeah. it's stupid because they want to make a soccer team that's eleven strikers. That would be terrible. No, they just want um, one. They just want one striker. Yeah, this whole thing. One person. This whole thing's about think... one person. It's Squid Game. No, it, don't they talk about in episode two making the team to... eleven strikers? They're going to split them into teams at some point. Yeah, no, this is this is this is Squid Game minus the death, but I wish it had the death. I, it might later. Who knows? I yeah, would. Um, <laughs> but it's like like the premise of this is like take for instance basketball, and you had this same premise in basketball, and then someone loses, and then they go through a growth spurt, and now they're seven one. It's like, well, I really want you on the national team now. Like it doesn't to me like it's just like the story doesn't make sense. Or like, why don't you go play overseas if you can't play on the Japanese team? It's just like the stakes at hand are so low where I feel like any logical human being would just be like, if I'm really good at soccer, I could fulfill what, my dream elsewhere. What country needs Japanese people to go play soccer in it? Real question. Sri Lanka? South Korea. No. Why? Uh, they don't have a soccer team? Maybe they're like mercenaries. Well, why why don't they just get, like, a Chinese player instead of a Japanese oh, player or some he, shit? Here's one. The U.S. men's national soccer team. They could easily get people from Central America. Pat's no, I, like I, I, I know. I just said that to trigger Pat whenever yeah. he listens to it. Yeah, um, that was a good one. <laughs> Got it, yes. Yeah, I, I don't Like, you're right. There aren't a lot of stakes, and it's dumb. But, like, that's the, that's the point. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah. want the Mamba mentality. You know what I mean? Like, that's what you want. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like trying to th understand. like, I'm trying to think of like other sports animes that do this and why. Say, for instance, Kuroko no Basket, where they're literally fucking wizards, <laughs> and like, I didn't like that. But then, if I watch something like Slam Dunk, which is more like more realistic, I'm gonna put that in air quotes because they're 14 year olds that can do windmill dunks. That resonates with me more. Maybe it's just like a preference with sports anime that I'm literally figuring out right now as I'm talking through it. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you do like IQ, which is um, goaded, which is mm. worse than blue luck. So, <laughs> okay, if everybody wants to get their pitchforks, Miles lives at one, two, three, <laughs> Norwood Drive, Atlanta, Georgia. So it's like you know, <laughs> four million apparently. Wait, that was just in the year. Never mind. Yeah, I, I think it's in the double digits for sales. Uh, gentlemen, before we move on after this, does anyone have any final thoughts on Blue Lock? Fifty-five million. Oh, so, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> I, uh, no, I think we're... I'm, I'm about to say, like, for me, if you like my taste, which is, like, three people, I'm indifferent right now, but I will probably watch most of it. I just, like, I don't like Kirk or No Basket, but I like IQ. so... These people aren't magic, right? It's yet, the scenario they're yet. yet they are, yet, they're, no, they're, they do. The, they're they are. the lowest. They're the lowest people in this entire league. Like, picture how skilled they are at number 300 and what number one is going to be. It's like, if I would see Tower of... They all have, they Tower all have like, special abilities and stuff, yeah. too. Yeah, it's only a matter of time before they are it's also a, wizards. It's a battle manga, yeah. pretty much. I'm I don't know. I like sure. Food Wars. This feels a lot like Food Wars, yeah. but with soccer. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so that's... Yeah. That's our right. That's our first impression. From <laughs> yeah, but anime food looks great, and I don't want to eat the soccer ball in blue. Yes. Luck. <laughs> so three, three. I'd say for right now, for sure, uh, recommendations on uh, Squid Game Soccer. Next up is the absolute banger of the year. No one saw this coming except for me. I called it from day one. Uh, that's Do It Yourself, a show about g cute girls doing power tool stuff. Gentlemen, I know we're gonna have a heated debate about this one. But I want us to cool our jets and uh, take a deep breath and really dive into what do-it-yourself means to you. Your thoughts. My thoughts on what it means to me. As someone who has been doing it myself a lot recently to set up my nursery. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going um, somewhere else with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> sorry. Uh, oh god. Um... <laughs> okay. Sorry. Pa- okay. What's as someone who's been masturbating a lot recently? <laughs> uh, uh, killing me, Smalls. Oh my god. Um, have fun with this, Pete. Um, I'm not editing I... this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I. I mean, I I like this show. It's fun. I I really like the character design. I really like the world design where it's like, I don't know, so so soon in the future, but in the future, it feels like this takes place like 15 years from now or something, you know, or they just have like slightly better technology than we have now. But I mean, I really liked it. I'm... I mean, I really liked it in the sense of, like, a cute girls doing cute things show. But it might not be my favorite cute girls doing cute things show of the season. It's possible. Oh, Spoilers. No. no. It's, a, it's a stack season for cute girls doing cute things. <laughs> yeah. Like two shows. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I truthfully, I don't have, like, a ton to say about it other than it's comfy. I think it looks good. They clearly don't have a huge animation budget. It was pretty slideshowy in parts of the first episode. But I don't think anyone's watching Do It Yourself for the Sakuga. So, you know, you just know what you're getting into. And I'm I'm excited to watch the rest of it. Yeah, I definitely... Man, this show's a banger. It's great. I love the character designs. That's really what popped out to me at, like, the most at first was how stylized it is. And pretty much everything from the setting to the character design, to even, like, the soundtrack. Super, super unique. Gives, like, futuristic, almost Animal Crossing vibes at points. Near future, I should say. And honestly, yeah, I I don't know. There's really not a ton to say at the moment. Other than, you should be watching this. It's it's a fun, laid-back show about, like, doing it yourself whether that's like building a bench or uh you know trying to repair your friendship with your complete bitch of a friend or what miles is doing in his free time Uh, it's all it's all on the table making gravy yeah yeah definitely making gravy in the kitchen a lot um for me i am a slice of life snob that's it's probably one of if not my favorite genres in anime i think this has like what I think this is like what Super Cub was last year for me, where it is just going to be in like my top five or ten slice of life of all time. And we haven't even been introduced to everybody yet. We haven't even been introduced to the best character, Juliet Queen Elizabeth VIII, aka Jobco. Really looking forward to when she shows up. It's just it's like silly nonsense where you can do the cute girls doing cute things for like anything, but it's the stuff in between that really like raises its score for me i i love the dialogue that they have that surf (laughs) your the girl literally named yourself um the pun that she always makes is like do it yourself get it my name is that as well i thought that would get old and it's not it I, i crack up every single time i like that she always calls her best friend essentially pudding and then she's like that's not my name and then immediately calls her pudding again that is, I don't know why. It's just shit like that just like resonates with me. It's like, yeah, yeah, this is really what, this is, this is peak. We are at Everest right now. That We have truly ascended. I, I love it. If you're a Slice of Life fan and you're not watching Do It Yourself yet, you're doing yourself a terrible favor and you need to do it yourself and go watch this show. Uh, same studio that did Kageki Shoujo, Pete. And- you literally just stole my fucking joke. I was ah. going to say, it's the same studio that did your favorite show, Gamers. Thank you, <laughs> Miles. <laughs> Hopefully oh, Haz is not listening to this, because you just triggered him. Like Haz ever listens to us. Miss you, buddy. Come Miss back. you, buddy. Um, yeah. <laughs> not a whole lot to talk about. I'm, I'm looking forward to like doing the review of, at the end of the season about this show, just to see... Once the entire crew is essentially set in stone, where it progresses, we've only made a bench so far, and I really want to see them build, like, a telescope or something like that. Who knows? Anything's on the table, so... Oh, how about this? What's something you want to see them build? Oh, shit. 
a guillotine. Ooh. For Queen Elizabeth? Yeah! <laughs> Ooh, like a koi pond. Okay. That would be sick, actually. I would really like that. They got uh, the they got the space. Honestly, like a Zen garden in general. Yeah, like with, like cool. one of those like bamboo things with like the water that comes down it or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. like yeah, definitely did, agree with that. Did you like how like the poor school when they were like leaving school they like look up and they see like the rich people's school and they're like, huh, I wonder what's the design about that. That seems really <laughs> odd, even though it's like clearly like an image for being rich and being poor <laughs> yeah and they're just like, like oh that's interesting that they built an entire school on top of our school okay let's go to the club i don't know stuff like that it's just not a whole lot i don't think anything else to talk about recommendation for me i'm assuming recommendation from everybody else is you're a slice of life fan yeah as long as you're Great. like a slice of life cute girls doing cute you know like i wouldn't recommend this if you were like if you're like a showed it only kind of guy yeah. you know but like yeah. Unless you're looking to expand, this is not a bad one to pick up this season. I might start expanding with something different than do it yourself personally. But uh, that's I mean, yeah, laid back camping too, <laughs> so I get you. Okay. So three three nods for do it yourself. Up next is a show that me and one other person are watching, and that is Raven of the Inner Palace, a more historical fantasy set in some timeline in China. I'm not entirely sure which like dynasty this takes place in or where it's supposed to be taking place in, but so far we've had three episodes out. I've only been able to watch two, but I can kind of see where that this is going. A story where there are like little stories that are happening each episode that overall affect this major this entire plot. So, uh, Jay, your thoughts so far on Raven of the Inner Palace? Like this a lot, but I'm kind of weird on it because. The voice acting in subtitles is so... It's odd to me that it doesn't have a Mandarin, uh, like, voiceover or dub, I should say. So, oftentimes, it feels like the names in the subtitles don't match what the characters are saying. So, it can be very confusing to know who is talking about who at points. Like, it's hard to match the names to the face at points. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I really enjoy it. It's pretty... Uh, the opening theme song is fucking awesome. Character designs are really good, especially the main character. And yeah, I like where the story is going so far. I like that it's got a bit of that supernatural element as well as the sort of like court intrigue aspect of it going on. Yeah, I'm I'm intrigued by like the the fantasy element because it seems like she has some type of power, but. Other than like kind of like knowing, because like the whole part of the first part is um, the the earring, and they contact her so she can figure out like whose earring it is because she has like the power to find people like that through items. But she also can like, I don't know if she's like pyrokinetic or something like that, but it seems like she could maybe shoot a fireball out of her hand. I'm a little intrigued by that. I, I I'm assuming that this is maybe going to turn into a romance ish with her and the emperor. That's kind of like the vibes I'm getting. We'll we'll see, but um, so far, if you're a fan of like historical dramas with like maybe like a hint of fantasy, I would recommend it. But right now, it's kind of hard to tell if like this is like solidified for me if I'm going to like recommend it for everybody because I think that the pace that it's going at it's hard to tell. It's it's kind of slow, which isn't bad. It's just hard to judge where I really think that this show is going to be in say four episodes where something like. Chainsaw Man, even if you haven't seen it for the first time, I think you have an idea of where Chainsaw Man is going. So that's kind of like where I'm feeling with this, where I'm going to keep watching, I'm going to see where it goes, and then I'll have a better idea. But right now, if you're a fan of historical dramas, I would recommend it. Yeah, I would agree with that. All right. So that was Raven of the Inner Palace. Uh, I think it's a show that we're all three of us are watching currently, and that is The Eminence in Shadow the time of recording, we have had two episodes uh, come out, I believe. If Maybe the third came out today? I'm not entirely sure. But, um, yeah, gentlemen, uh, this was kind of hyped in our preview episode, so I want to get your thoughts on so far of what you thought of The Eminence in the Shadow. Yeah, I uh, hyped it a little bit, um, and I've been pleased so far. It's not exactly the tone that I thought it was going to be. I thought it would be leaning a little bit more on humor. And we saw that in episode two, but episode two still wasn't quite as humor focused as I thought it would be. It has a lot of understated humor, mm-hmm. um, which I, I think is good. Um, 
like I don't think animation like <laughs> try to put humor in the forefront too often. So just sort of some of the things about how you know he's making these plans, basically pulling them out of his ass, but they seem to be working, and people just are yes anding him for like his entire life. Um, feel pretty cool. Like I, I like that. Uh, it was a pretty cool episode. I think it's definitely my favorite isekai of the season so far. Um, I like the character designs. I liked the episode one being sort of like the backstory and I'm excited to see what goes on further down the line. They've set up a couple of interesting plot lines. The sister, the girl who was in the locket obviously is going to matter somewhat. And then what his harem of Greek alphabet um, is going to do. Uh, Cause they said they were dipping at the end of season or in the end of episode two. So, you know, I'm excited to figure out how all of that goes. Yeah. I was kind of surprised by this. It started off... I didn't go in knowing it was an isekai. Um, man, that first episode was so edgy. Like, whenever he's fighting the guys with the crowbars and whatnot. I don't know. And then, like, he just ends up getting hit by a car, and it's an isekai. And that was kind of cool. I'm mostly just here for the cat girl that's beating up the thugs in that one alleyway. So I'm just waiting to meet her and kind of see what her deal is. I'm sure she'll get, like, zero characterization because there's, like, 12 girls or some shit in this show. <laughs> and there's uh, two cat girls as well, so. Yeah, she's the white one. The white-haired white, one. Yep. Well, there's a black-haired one and a white-haired one. Yep. I don't know. I like the second episode well enough. I'm kind of questioning how he got enough slime armor for everybody because it seems like everybody has, like, the same kind of outfit he does but at the end of the day i guess it's like one of those power fantasy sort of isekai things i did also like Mayo said i enjoyed how like he's just kind of making shit up as he goes along and it works out i feel like that'll be a plot point at some point where they're gonna be like you have like an s rank luck skill or yep. some shit like that it's like okay cool so this is why people compare it to like konosuba or whatever i understand now yeah, the the crossover of having a harem of girls on your team and then also having insane luck skills. Like, ah, this is just Konosuba. A little bit more bloody, but I, I get it. Uh, for me, I am in the boat of I like the premise more than I actually like the show. When I watched episode one, where it's essentially the movie Kick-Ass in anime form, I was like, I kind of just want a Kick-Ass anime now. And then... It, it kind of seemed really abrupt that he went through all of this. I, like, I understand that, that was the whole point of setting up, like, his backstory. But it, we had, like, this whole thing, and then it's just like, boom, hit by a truck and died. It wasn't like Yu Yu Hakusho, where it's like, oh, he was trying to save a kid, and then that's why he died. That's what I would have preferred if we, he had some form of, like, reason to get hit by a bus or a truck. This was just like, got hit by a truck, too bad. Didn't really enjoy that aspect of it. And then episode two seemed a little... I mean, we saw at the end of episode one that he was with, like, all the girls. And then in episode two, they're, like, already doing battle as a team where, like, we've only really been introduced to maybe one of the girls. I thought that was, like, kind of, like, super fast-paced. I was like, I don't know who any of these girls are, why they're here. Maybe we'll get that later, but that's kind of, like, by, like, qualms with it. But other than that, it was a fun, you know, slash em isekai that I expect in these day and ages. I don't think that this is going to win any awards, but I'll I'll keep watching. It's two cores, so hopefully we get some like development, and some more uh, some more intrigue from from my perspective, and maybe maybe it gets better. Who knows? But for me, I'm kind of I'm kind of lukewarm on it right now. From so there's a few things that, and I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I know that in the web novel, episode one was like chapter 150 something of that. We didn't have his backstory for a while. And so I don't know if they're just sort of starting us, like, in medias res, like, with that, and, like, maybe we could, maybe we'll get some flashbacks to, like, knowing the other girls better, because we sort of know Alpha and we sort of know Beta, I feel like. But then, you know, there's all the other ones. So I, I am interested to see how they do that. I could see it being good or bad, which sounds reductive, <laughs> but, like, um... You know, the way that they're setting it up doesn't have a lot of medium outcomes, I don't think, uh, because 
they'll either do it well or it'll be bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, there's nothing that we've seen so far. Have been like, yeah, this is this is it. This is the one where something like I know you're not gonna like this take, but like with something with like jobless reincarnation, where the animation is stunning and the music is incredible, and they set they have time to like set up. This was just more of like, hey, nine girls, nine two cat girls and a and a dude, and they're really powerful. And they're gonna kill a bunch of shit. It's like okay. I get that. That's what I'm going to get, and that's what I got. Jay, do you have any final thoughts on the show? Uh, Sadly, I looked up the wiki for the girl I was talking about. First of all, she's a wolf, not a cat. Ah, uh, my apparently. apologies. Oh, F tier. That, that can evolve. The only thing that, the only part of the wiki that has any information is just her appearance. Personality, chronology, powers, and abilities, <laughs> trivia, and references are all just blank. Ter terrible terrible start but hopefully it works out also the, the the wiki mentions her cleavage specifically so she's got that going on i guess gotta get the fan service and a male power fantasy absolutely mm -hmm. uh so yeah i'm lukewarm miles would you recommend the show yeah i think so like currently just understand that it might be bad i think i guess i'd be lukewarm on it but i have faith okay how about you jay hesitantly watching it basically i need to see how they go how this pacing works out mm -hmm. I, I don't think i'm all, even if i do think it gets bad i don't think i'm going to drop it it was kind of fun but like i don't know kind of just hoping for a little bit more just based off what i've seen based off like the the mal ratings and stuff like that so that's three kind of like maybes from us our next Let's keep it with the theme of Isekai. Okay, okay. Sorry. Wait, while we're on that, I just want to say Zeta and Ada, apparently, literally the anime is the first time they've ever been seen in the light novels or manga <laughs> or whatever. Okay. So they don't expect them to do anything. They haven't done anything in the novels, basically. Noted. Sad times. Noted. Sorry for Wolf Girl. Me too, dude. All sorry. Right. Let's move uh, on. Let's keep, let's keep the theme with Isekais, because we got a few here. Uh, reincarnated as a sword, a show that I personally thought was going to be bad because it's called reincarnated as a sword. And to my surprise, it's okay. It's not, it, it's better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, Jelvin, want to get your thoughts on reincarnated as a sword. Yeah. Um, I'm a little mid on it. I did enjoy it, but I do think it's like a, if you're not a super big isekai person, maybe skip it kind of show. Uh, what I did like about it was that it portrayed slavery as bad. That's pretty impressive for an isekai. Um, you don't see that a lot. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll definitely keep watching it. I, the, the sword's personality is kind of fun. I liked where he was like, oh, I hope a cute girl picks me up. And then like it's like 10 days later, and he's like, I hope literally anyone picks me up. And then it's like two months later, and he's just like having a mental breakdown. Um, so it'll be good. I'm excited to see... Um, you know, it, really, it feels like a real Drake storyline. You know, you started from the bottom, now you're here. So we get to <laughs> get to see how the uh, wolf girl or the cat girl, she's a cat girl, um, yeah, sort of works her way up to become the first of her race to evolve. I am curious. I haven't seen episode two yet, but I'm a little curious if that gets explained more i, th I, I think wanna... you'll like the show more once you watch the second episode okay cool um, I, I was the same way a little lukewarm after the first episode and second episode I'm like yeah this is way better okay neat so those are my initial thoughts i'll definitely be catching up on it just to stay in the zeitgeist so i don't say anything silly <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah that, that's those are my initial thoughts what do you got for us jay i know you've been enjoying this uh, so far I'm enjoying it quite a bit, honestly. I was surprised how much I like both the main characters. Normally I just really don't go for this sort of, like, show, but I liked how they... I don't know, there's just something about this where I like how they have the game mechanics going, the soundtrack hits pretty well, character designs are good, and honestly, whenever they devote to the action scenes, like, there's a lot of good animation going on there. Nothing, like, insane, but... Better than, like, better than Shield Heroes Season 2, you know, like... That's a given. <laughs> yeah, a fair. A book made by a 10-year-old has... <laughs> true, 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 true. <laughs> so I think if you're somebody who likes those sort of, like, video game -y, 
uh, power fantasy type deals that like dot hack or uh, not the dot. Not that Dot Hacks is so power fantasy, but like sword art, stuff like that, with the heavy RPG systems, then I think you'll enjoy this. I would definitely recommend it if you're somebody who can like who can look past the kind of silly premise of being reincarnated as a sword and give it a shot. One thing that I didn't think that this show was going to have, especially Miles, you haven't watched the second episode, is it's pretty funny. Um Fran yeah. has really good comedic timing when um the the she show the master sword is kind of like translating some stuff for her in terms of like the situations that she's in and i was cracking up episode two when she got into her altercation but kind of like what jay said the music in this show is like really really good i was shocked by how good this music is because i expected the production value to be kind of on the lower side and it's probably in like the slightly above average side so that's a huge plus for me this show, if you've ever seen Bofuri, this is like a rated R version of Bofuri because Fran goes psycho and just mauls people, which is fantastic. Where Bofuri's obviously in a video game and it's not as gr uh, cruel. I would, yeah, I I'm in Jay's boat. I would recommend the show. It was, it was a lot of fun. It's different. It's uh, anti-slavery, like Miles said, which is a huge plus and a very rare thing in isekai anime. So yeah, yeah, I, I would say if you're a fan of, you know isekais this is one of this is the one of probably the best one this season maybe but like yeah probably one of the best of the year yeah i'm a fan uh gentlemen any final thoughts on reincarnated as a sword i don't think no, so i think we're good cool all right uh next up i believe this is the yeah this is the last of the isekai bash we have that is i am the villainous so i am taming the final boss a story where if you saw the old villainous show that we had, that's also getting like a movie uh, transport into like a visual novel story style of a game where she, the main character is the, the villain instead of like the hero. And then instead of following the same route, she's kind of picking and choosing her own story. And then this is, she's deciding that she's going to, uh, tame the, essentially the demon Lord, who is the brother of, like the nice guy at the school or whatever. So uh, I believe Miles, you watched the first episode of this. I did. Yes. Yeah. Um, What's your thoughts so, on this so far? This is something that I'm going to be watching the dub for. So I'm going to be a few weeks behind. Um, it's not like a show that I really wanted to commit to really hard, but I did really like episode one. So maybe I will be. Oh. Um, <laughs> so to me, I so I really like um, Cautious Hero, and the main character in this gives me pretty hard Restarte vibes. Like the way that she thinks and her inner monologue and everything, um, she just feels like a more shoujo-y Restarte. And I, I'm here for the comedy. I thought it was pretty funny. It's the show is not doing anything special. It's a pretty common trope thing for shoujo isekai from my understanding i haven't consumed a lot of them so maybe that's just like really ignorant for me to say but like from what i've seen this is like the general vibe you get from them if you see this and you like the humor i think it's definitely worth checking out i had a lot of fun with it yeah i i would say okay i'm, also, I'm gonna put this in the perspective that i would say that people who are familiar with this style of show are probably familiar with the other villainous show. So I'm going to do the comparison off that where that is w much more focused on the comedy between like the cast and the main character being like dense, not realizing that she has a harem. This is more um, romance centric where she is very adamant about like being with the demon Lord. And he's just like, kind of vibing like okay maybe i'll go along with this and it's not this they're not dense they understand the situation so that's why i'm kind of liking this more than the other villainous show Ooh. yeah um well season two of villainous i actually thought was kind of oh bad. yeah that was pretty mid right yeah mm -hmm. Th this one it's like <laughs> when if you do watch more episodes the the chemistry picks up and it feels like that's kind of how you feel when you meet somebody and you start flirting with them. And sometimes in the beginning, it's just like silliness. But then as you get more comfortable, 
it kind of layers on a little bit more and more and more. Like how, how far can I push this flirting? And that's kind of like where they're going with it. And I'm a huge fan of that from a romance thing. So I, I I'm really liking the dynamic between her and uh, the demon Lord guy, Claude. Um, it's, this isn't like groundbreaking at all, but honestly, we don't really have like romance this season. And this is kind of like where I'm resonating with my romance fix and I'm having a good time with it. So I would recommend it to people who are looking for something like that this season, knowing shows like this. I don't know if anything's actually going to progress past flirting, but we'll see. So I'm, I'm here for the ride. Yeah. I I'm excited to see, like, there's a couple of dynamics there. I'm, I'm excited to see like how much of a douche the old fiance ends up being. Um, I could see him going either way, like definitely going to have his like villain arc, but I could see him sort of, you know, having character development either way where he like, gets over any jealousy or anything or where he just goes like full villain or whatever. And I'm interested to see if that latter thing happens, how her best friend who ended up with her ex fiance ends up because she seemed pretty reasonable with what was happening in that episode one scene. Yeah. And so, you know, like maybe she ends up leaving the emperor because he's being unreasonable to her. And that makes him angry. You know, like there's a lot of interesting, like, political entanglement of these love connections. So I'm excited to see how those play out. Right on. Yep. So I would recommend if you like the, the other villainous show, I would recommend this one as well. Next up is a show that I God, I fucking love this show so much. I think it's just, this is exactly why I watch anime. Akiba made war. Lots of words can be used to describe this show. Gentlemen want to get your thoughts on Akiba made war. It's awesome. <laughs> Like, God, I really can't think... The only thing I can think about when I think about the show is is the idol scene that corresponds with uh, the mass murder scene. And how freaking hype that was. And how, while I think everything else that I watched was good too, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> You know, I'm excited to see this play out. Um, Cute Girls Do the Mafia was not on my list of shows I thought I would be watching. But I guess it should have been after Licorice Recoil. I should have been aware that something like this may happen. Uh, but it's a pretty interesting show. It's pretty hype. I think it's definitely worth watching because it's absurd in a fun way. So, Yeah, I feel a similar way. Um, obviously, the first 20 seconds or so of episode one start off pretty strong in getting you a bit hooked but honestly i really wasn't expecting the pure absurdity of that first episode just like i don't even know how to describe it it was almost like made cafe training day in a way yep. like i was surprised there wasn't more there's a lot of violence but god forbid there be drug usage going on in that show you know i we didn't get a car ride where they do, like, angel dust or anything like that, but fuck, man, if there wasn't, like, hundreds of people slaughtered in Akiba at the start, or in the first episode. Honestly, really dope show. Uh, I like the way the characters are going so far. Designs are solid. Kind of waiting for some of the cast to still be introduced. I'm not sure if they were introduced in the second episode. Haven't I gotten around to it yet, but I'm excited for it. I don't know if you've noticed in the OP that there is another girl that will be introduced later, but in the OP, she's like the blurred. scribble face. Yeah. Yes, that's who I'm. Yeah, I'm waiting for her. Yeah, that's yeah, that's so cool, isn't it? I love, I love that. Yeah, this this is the shit that I love anime where it's just it's you're taking Zombie Land Saga meets The Godfather meets Kill Bill and then throwing it in a maid cafe. And like Jay said, the first like minute or so, you will know exactly whether this is your show or not. And to me, I literally said, what the fuck out loud when I watched that, because <laughs> based off like the PV and based off of like the, the poster, I knew it was going to be something silly with maids. I wasn't expecting, you know, um, the pig maid cafe going to war with the love, love moonbeam cafe stuff like that was just like that was not on my radar and i'm really glad it is because this show is just spectacular i 
I look forward to watching this every, I think it's on Thursdays that this is like the first show that I watch on Thursday. It, it just blew me away. It's, it's out of control. It's wild. I don't know what to expect. The scenarios can be, they can literally pick anything like related in like otaku culture. And then that's probably going to be a premise for a gang war. So I'm just, I can't wait to when they go to like, I don't know the, the arcade and then they get into like a race war on like racing machines and then they kill each other cause they lost or something like get into a race war, huh? Not that type of race war, like literally <laughs> yeah. racing vehicles. So yeah, this show's incredible. Yeah. I'm, it's one of my favorites so far from this year. Uh, gentlemen, do you have any final thoughts on Akiba made war? I'm just happy something like this exists. Yeah. It's definitely one of my other surprise shows of the season. Yep. So. Yep, if you don't like mass violence, I would definitely recommend Akiba Made War. Uh, now the exact opposite of Akiba Made War. <laughs> uh, we have Bochi the Rock, a a K-On slash Comey Can't Communicate uh, crossover show where we are getting girls doing cute things in a band. So gentlemen, your thoughts on Bochi the Rock. The opposite of Akiba Made War. So far. So far? Oh. So- <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> Kaon's like super mid, and Bochi the Rock is like super at least high mid. So, um, I'll take that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've had I've had a good time. I'm not ready to like commit to it, but I, I've enjoyed it so far. I like Bochi the Rock, um, and I don't like the two things that it's combined into. So this is something that's sort of like, uh, you know, the sum is greater than the whole of its parts, or whatever that expression yeah. is. Um. You know, I, I normally hate so socially anxious protagonists that they're, like, incapable of, like, doing anything, like, at all, like, literally just, like, existing in any way. But she's kind of funny about herself with it, so I can forgive it. Like, when she's playing on stage, like, with a literal box over her, and she's like, oh, this is, like, I'm finally going out there. And then she's like, nah, just kidding. This is a low point for me. This is so embarrassing. I was like, I thought that was super funny. When the drummer girl said that she sucked, and then she just was like, "Oh, I want to die," and they like started playing the credits or whatever. Yeah. I like I thought that was so funny. So this show has been really funny. I definitely enjoy it. I think it's my favorite cute girls doing cute things uh, show this season. So I'm excited to watch some more. It feels nice and comfy, and I've gotten some pretty good laughs out of it. Yeah, it's so. hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed Bochi the Rock quite a little bit. I like the massive amount of like references to Japanese just music in general that they have, but specifically J Rock. I don't know, man. This was one where character design I know I've keep going back to character design, so I feel like there's just so many good shows with great character designs this season and Bochi the Rock is one hundred percent one of them. I love the voice acting of the uh the main girl. She, I think she does a really good job of sounding, like, anxious and, like, mortified at herself at points, which I appreciate. Kind of waiting to hear the mu- the actual music is the thing. I'm sure they're waiting for, like, the... Till they get, like, a vocalist yep. to actually start showing the music... Or showing them playing the music so we can hear it. But it would have been cool if they could at least have given us, like, a little instrumental or something while they're performing, instead of just, like, cutting to black and then them being finished, in my opinion. I'm assuming, well, yeah, the OP is their song, so I'm assuming we're going to hear the OP in the song, or sorry, the OP in the the anime, so that, and I like the OP, so I'm hoping that the music in the show is going to be very good. I, I compare this to Komi because they have the social anxiety tag to this however i think bochi or um hattori handles it better than like what komi does where she is actively trying to like better herself while still dealing with like her anxiety and trying to push herself more and instead of komi where it's like it's played off as a joke we're seeing it even in episode two the progress that she has in her social anxiety. And I was like, that's really cool. But like another thing, like Miles said, this show, or I guess I said it, this show is hilarious where she's so embarrassed in episode one that she wants to commit a sepeku or whatever it's called, where you like stab yourself in the, in the chest, but she wants to do it with her guitar. 
I, I like that like that's how embarrassed she was that she wants to die by killing herself with her guitar. Uh the second episode where she's trying to get sick so she doesn't have to go to work. I think we've all been in that situation before. I think most of us would just call in sick, but she's such a good person that she wants to actually be sick uh, before actually calling into work. So stuff like that is just the subtle humor that they have in the show is just like really funny. I'm, I'm a huge fan. Like Miles said, if it wasn't for, I, I don't know. I think this and do it yourself are like tied for like best cute girls doing cute things. Slice of life. I'm I'm going to make you choose at the end of the season. Please. It's tough. I have them both at nines right now. I So, like, I rewatched Do It Yourself three times. Or, I guess I rewatched it twice. And I only watched Bochy the Rock once. So, because of that, I'm going to put Do It Yourself just a smidge higher. But I love this style of show. I've rewatched it multiple times. It's just a really good time. Yeah, I would highly recommend Bochy the Rock to... Uh, if you're a fan of music, if you're a fan of Slice of Life, if you're a fan of comedy, this is I think this is, like, right up most people's alley to be honest uh jump in, any final thoughts on bochi the rock cool i think that's three thumbs up from us from that last but not least before we get to our sequels and what else we are watching our last group discussion show is probably it's probably my favorite show this season so far uh it might be miles's as well and that is mobile suit gundam the witch from mercury gentlemen want to get your thoughts on this absolute banger uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was super hype about this. I'm, like, completely irrational about this show. I just love it so much for whatever reason. I, 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 I never rewatch things, but I watched episode one three times because I just wanted to watch more, but it didn't exist. So <laughs> I just kept watching episode one. And building um, Gundams. Yeah, I started buying Gunpla, but, like, none of the Witch for Mercury things are in stock anywhere. Because uh, I guess they've been selling well. So I was like, oh, I guess I have to start watching Iron-Blooded Orphans so that I can buy Iron-Blooded Orphans, Gumpla. Um, Let's go watch The Origin, man. Holy shit. I, well, yeah, I, we'll get around to it. Um, <laughs> it turns out there's only so many Gumpla out there, even though it's like a lot. Not all of them are available. Anyways, The Witch for Mercury is great. I really like the character designs. I really like the world. Like, just some of, like, the whole sp space is so fucking cool. You know, so how they'll, like, float around or whatever is just really neat to me. It's basically just Utena, but with mechs. Yep. And so I'm about that. I like that it's gay. You know, there's just a lot of reasons I'm hyped about it. I think that the um, sort of campiness of the current political uh issues is really fun where it's just like it's a Gundam because I said so and like the bad woman is like very obviously our protagonist's mom and they're like not even bothering hiding that it's just a thing that we get to know so we get some dramatic irony in there I like that a lot too um I'm having a ton of fun with it yeah I've been enjoying Witch for Mercury quite a bit as well uh unlike you two I'm I think, anyway. This isn't my first uh, Gundam series. This is my third. Oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, which ones did you watch before? Uh, the Netflix movies, whatever that one is, and then Wing. Oh, well. Okay, well, we we, we don't have to count Wing. No, we okay. don't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So, I, I had a bit of expectations going into this. I kind of figured it would be closer to the Iron-Blooded Orphans kind of deal rather than, like, the Universal Century stuff that uh, a lot of people enjoy. I mean, a lot of people enjoy both, but it's a very distinct split in the fandom from what I understand. So I was kind of pleasantly surprised... Surprised? I was kind of pleasantly surprised... That it wasn't something similar to, like, Gundam Seed or perhaps Build Fighters. It seems like there's actually, like, some stakes going on here, but it's not super melodramatic. I think the school aspect of it kind of helps, like, cut... Like, it keeps the drama a little bit tamped down 100%. compared to it being, like, just a war zone, like, 86 or something like that, right? So I, I kind of enjoy that we get, like, one side of it where you have, spoiler alert, it's probably, it's her mom. They have the same arm. Uh, 
you know, doing her, like, char politicking, scheming stuff. And then we have the other side of it where it's, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, but Gundams, basically. Yes. <laughs> Uh, the only thing I don't like is I don't like the way some of the hair is designed. That's my only complaint. Ooh. But I, I know other people do enjoy that. And... I, I didn't think I was going to, but then I did. <laughs> some of them so... are great. Some of them are great. Some of them are misses for me personally. I don't think they're bad or anything like that. Just for me personally, they're misses. But uh, my boy, uh, what's his name? Shadik. He's the best character already. He's awesome. Yeah, yeah his design's insane. Yeah. Um, other than that, I like it a lot. The main character is super good. Uh, I'll probably get an aerial hit whenever they release them. So They're already released, but they're back-ordered. But they are releasing in April a clear aerial kit, which is super Ooh, cool. And in April, there's a w full mechanics master grade one coming out, which I plan on getting. So, Dang. um, You have a child on the way. <laughs> Yeah, well, you and know, her name is Gunpla. <laughs> Ch choking hazards. Let's uh, just buy them. <laughs> well, yeah, that, I mean, the child will be in a crib for a while. So, and well, like, you act like you're not going to put the Gunpla in the crib, too. <laughs> you should, oh, oh fu fuck a mobile. You should buy her a mobile suit, suit gun Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, uh, kind of like what Miles has said. I've rewatched episode one twice. I'm, at, I usually rate my shows after three episodes. This is probably a ten through three episodes. I'm loving every second of it. The music, the animation, even silly things were like you know how Suleta does the thing with her hand and she's like this. I thought that was just like her being quirky, but I guess it's like a defense thing that she does in the Gundam. So, like, even, like, her actions have, like, these little subtle things where it's like, no, she's not just quirky. She's, like, imitating, like, what she would do in a Gundam. And I really like that about her character and the fact that she eats tomatoes is, like, fun. I don't know. Stuff like that. I, Miorin eats tomatoes. Yeah. And Soleta has red hair and is a tomato. Yeah, yeah. Get it? Yeah. Get get it? She's protecting her tomato. To Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in our preview, I was kind of debating whether I thought that this was going to be more like Darling in the Franks. Or if this was kind of like going to be like more like eighty six, and I'm liking so far that it's more like Darling in the Franks, where the the drama is kind of toned down. And it's more center focused on them becoming, uh, like these pilots in the future than the actual like in war type of thing. So, so far, I uh, I think this is just absolutely incredible. I I love it. I can't wait for Sundays to watch it. I think it's most of our first watches on Sunday, if not the only. We'll see, but. Yeah, I, I can't recommend this enough. I, I love it. Uh, gentlemen, any final thoughts on The Witch for Mercury? I think the perfect comparison for this is Fire Emblem Three Houses, if you've ever played that game. You start off in like a school arc, and I expect there to be some ratcheting up of the drama by the end of this 26 episodes, uh, I think we get. Uh, um, it's two parts, so whatever that means. Yeah, so... um. You know, I, I might, I, there might even be a time skip. I'm interested to see what happens, but uh, I'm excited. Jade, any final thoughts? Uh, I had one, but I lost it. I'm good. No problem. I apologize for going first. Ah, we're oh, no good. Worries. So that it wraps up our uh, group discussion on the new shows that we're watching. Uh, gentlemen, any shows that we didn't mention, like sequels that you are currently watching that you have any thoughts on before we head out? Golden Kamui is awesome. It has been good every single season, basically, but it gets better every single season, in my opinion. This is what I'm so sad that people were sleeping on. I had a friend who is a pretty big fan of the manga, and he didn't even know it was airing this season. Shame on you, Matthew, if you're listening to this. Um, if you haven't caught up with it, go catch up with it. It's honestly a really fun watch all the way through, and... You know, it'll be done by the time that... It'll probably be done by the time you catch up if you're taking your time. Or maybe it won't be and you can enjoy it with the rest of us. But it's entering its final arc, and I would highly recommend that. How are you liking uh, Pop Team Epic? Uh, Pop Team Epic is great as always. They're keeping up with the star power in every single episode for the voice acting. Uh, they, they've had more lesbian yaoi going on, and it's hilarious every single time, and... 
honestly, if you even if you haven't seen the first ep or first season of Pop Team Epic, even if you haven't seen the first episode of the season, just hop in on the latest one and go b watch backwards if you want. It doesn't have a story. You're not like you might not get some of the like bits at first, but it's not like they ever really explained them from the beginning. So just go enjoy it. It's not a show that's meant to be watched in a serialized way as it is. Yep. So. Miles, how about you? We we've covered all the shows I'm watching because I'm really bad at sequels. Are you watching Spy Family? Haven't even started it. Wow. I know. Well, that's because I watch it with Kayla, and Kayla has Kayla's. She's dealing with something it. right now. Yeah, yeah she has, she has something going on. So <laughs> that, that's um, fair. I've been I've been waiting until at some point I might have to just like be like sorry, dear, yeah. and <laughs> watch oh, it. But we have uh, time. Pete, did you watch Bleach? Uh, nope. I dropped Bleach, so I'm. I honestly, I'll, I'll probably watch it. I'll probably watch a few episodes just so, if this is like in my anime of the year wars for like best animation or something like that, I'll have an idea of what I see. It'll definitely have a fight at the very yeah, least. Yeah, I I don't really so. have any interest just based off what I've seen from Bleach. I don't have any interest of catching up or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, I think that honestly, it's something where. You should probably be caught up if you want to watch it, but it's not necessary. They realize I feel like the like Piero kind of realized that it's been like over a decade or some shit mm -hmm. since this last aired. So they kind of had character introductions from the get go. Like they added some stuff to kind of help put people back into the saddle. Gotcha. I guess. So if you're somebody who's kind of scared to watch Bleach and that you think maybe because there's so much of it and you haven't watched all those arcs, maybe just go like look up a YouTube video that explains what has happened thus far because they actually do show the entire series up to that point in the closing credits for the first episode, weirdly enough. Interesting. Okay. Good to know. Uh, I will wrap things up for just based off what I'm watching. Um, Spy Family Part 2. I don't know how, but it somehow got better. It, not just like in the story, but like animation wise, it's a step up. I'm gonna have an internal debate whether which OP I think is better because this OP is just so good. Uh, Mob Psycho season three, probably my anime of the season. I love Mob. Obviously, I have him tattooed. The season has been off to an incredible start. Cannot wait to see where it goes from here. Um, Uzaki Chan. If you watch season one, it's the same shit from season two. Uh, Ear Makun, if you watch season one and season two, kind of the same thing from season three. It's still super fun. It's a Saturday morning cartoon. Uh, lot, lots of fun. More than a married couple, but not lovers. The show is ass. If I'm going to drop <laughs> a show this season, it's probably that one. We shall see. Uh, Jay mentioned it, Golden Conway season four. Normally, I really enjoy the beginning parts of Golden Conway, and I rate them like a nine. I think right now it's off to a blazing start. I'd rate it a 10 right now. I think it's absolutely incredible from what I've seen so far. Probably the best season so far of Golden Conway that I think when it's all said and done, it's going to end up. Um, a Bibliophile Princess. I thought episode one was pretty bad, and then episode two was much better. It's a story about... Um, it's kind of like a forced marriage and then them kind of realizing that they actually do like each other. So that's been like a fun contrast. So, uh, other than that, I think I covered everything that I'm watching. They ruined Berserk. So that sucks. But if you're watching the Berserk, uh, ser uh, episodic ways, just watch the movies on Netflix. They're cutting a bunch of shit and it's super annoying, but that's just the Berserk guy and me. Other than that. Uh, that's all for us today. Uh, if you have made this far and want to support us, best way to do so, like, comment, subscribe, leave a review on whatever platform uh, you are listening or watching us on. If you want to hear manga takes, go check out Manga Melee, hosted by Jay. I'm on there like half the time. It's a lot of fun. Uh, for Watch Club, next week we are watching Licorice Recoil. So if you like that show, come check out a, our group discussion on that. Otherwise, in two weeks, we will be doing our group QA episode. So look forward to that. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time.